Hi everybody. In this episode, we're going to go over some of the extra exercises that were part of Shamardine's book. This is again on page 32. I'm doing the second half of the exercises, but I'm leaving off six since I did that in the earlier uh, little episode on reading expectations. So I figured you can get your answer key there, and right now we can just concentrate on the last four, seven through ten. Uh, which are, of course, interesting in their own right, uh, and we're going to be able to get a lot out of them. So let's start. So, ta tu tamiu tekna therapeuse tos hipus is our first sentence. So let's let's diagram it. We have a nice sandwich here, right? Because that ta gets us expecting something. We need to wait until tekna to fulfill that. Well, what is that? That's either a nominative, accusative, or vocative neuter plural, second declension. That's what chapter six was all about, so no surprise it's showing up here. What's this, tu tamiu? Well, this is coming from ha tamias, one of our first declension masculine. Remember that this may, meant steward. It's a rare, well, fairly rare word in Greek, um, so I don't know why it's getting so much love from Shelmerdine, but it is. And then techna, what was that? Well, this is new to this chapter, and it means child. So in the plural here, children, the children, what's this case? Genitive of the student. Not oh, sorry, so the steward, not student. <laughs> Been teaching too long. All right, let's go. And by too long, I mean four weeks at this point. Come on, Al, get it together. Here we are, therapeuse is our next thing to consider. Well, what's going on here? Well, a is a third person singular ending, so third singular, that's helpful. There's a sigma here, so this could be aorist or future. How do we know it's not aorist? Well, in this case, the ending, A, that's a future or present ending, that's a third singular for aorist would be N, or just E. There's also no past indicative augment. So we can't be dealing with a past tense. It has to be the present or future. That's a dead giveaway future. So will honor, will tend to in this case. We're learning that therapeuo can mean a little bit more than just honoring muses. It can also mean looking after. And that's uh, children of the steward looking after something that makes all the sense in the world. And then finally, tus hippus. So this was a vocab word from chapter five. Um, very popular in all names when we look at Philip, which used to be Philippos, that's love horse, horse lover. Um, that sounds potentially bestial, but that's not where we're going with this. Horses were a sign of aristocracy, uh, so this was like maybe having a, a fancy British hyphenated last name uh, followed by Esquire. If you were Philip or Phidippides or something like that, that, that Ippos suggests that you're, you're, you're one of the Agathoi. You're one of the, uh, the leaders. You're one of the aristocrats. Uh, so the steward is probably not, or the children of, but they're looking after the horses of the aristocrats. So let's do this. W why are horses and aristocrats? Because horses are expensive. Same now. Not everyone can do dressage, right? So here we are. We've got our sentence now, basically, but we have a problem. What's that problem? Well, what case is this? That's unambiguously accusative plural. So that's going to be our direct object, and that makes sense with verbs of tending. And it would make sense that the children of the steward are doing the tending, but they're the children, right? They're the childs. They're plural. Why do we have a singular ending here? That's not usi. So what is going on? Well, something if you were reading closely along in the notes, you know that one of the things that makes neuter noun so special, one reason that the nominative and accusative are always the same, is because they kind of have this history of being objects. Well, that history of objects carries over into subjecthood, and that we'd like to give something that's a plural verb to something that's a plural subject. But here, techna, even though they are animate beings, are grammatically neuter, and what that means is that they can be lumped together as one kind of cluster, one group, 
this is kind of lots of techna in here, but then it's that group of techna who's doing the verbing. That's weird. Also, what I want to say is that makes a lot of sense when we're dealing with rocks or gifts. That's weird when we're dealing with children. So even though that what Shelmerdine has done here is correct and is good Greek, a lot of times people without such good Greek or people who are just talking off the cuff would easily substitute therapeusousi because they're thinking not, oh, that's ta techna neuter. They're thinking those are children with faces, those are living, breathing things. Uh, we kind of lose the neuterness and the objecthood of that. So often in Greek, you would actually see that instead of this third singular ending. But Shelmerdine's making a point here, and it's a point that you need to know, which is genitive or neuters, whether plural or singular, take singular verbs. Still plural in terms of its uh, uh, article, singular verb. So let's go ahead and give this the translation that it deserves. The children of the steward will, again, let's forget about Shalmardine's insistence on shall, shall, will, tend to, let's say, the horses. Good. One sentence down, let's do the next. Epithomen tus polemius, sorry, me pistewen to stratego. All right. First person plural, that's easy. Ep, where is this coming from? This must be coming from patho, right? So this has to be a past indicative augment. So this all has to be imperfect, right? Because this is coming from the first principal part, patho. So, we've done a little dirty work there. We know we've got our subject. We're not going to be expecting a nominative because we already have the subject. It's us, we. So we is a subject, first person, plural. Good. Tus, okay, accusative, masculine. We're expecting this to be our direct object. So, and this means persuade. So we were persuading, used to persuade, tried to persuade the polemius. Well, what does this look mean? This is a new vocabulary, and it means enemy. And we use this to talk about a group of enemies. That's why it's plural, and we can refer to it in the single, singular. So just if there's a big football game going on this weekend, which there happens to be between Utah and Brigham Young, each school is the other's polemioi the enemy, but, but not really. I mean, they'll be friends off the field, but probably not on it. So we were persuading the enemy. Let's keep it a singular translation, but know that's really the, the hostile forces. And then what's this? May. Well, that's, that's no, but that's, that's another version of ooh or ook. But this happens not before any sort of vowel or whatever but with infinitives. Infinitives and also more broadly non-indicatives. But we don't know other non-indicatives yet, so we just have to, we have to do what we can. So this is cueing us in at this point to say, ah, we're going to get an infinitive next. And I do mean next because these negative uh, adverbs precede their verbs directly. And then what do we have here? Great infinitive, pestelwein, to believe. So not to believe. And then pistewo, we'll remember, it's one of those verbs that pairs with the date of, which we have right here. First declension, masculine, and then it's date of. That's singular. Strategos. Oh, oh, wrong. This is not stratiotes. That was first declension. This is strategos, second declension. That in the nominative ends in gamma, omicron, sigma. Well, good. Let's erase all of our help and try to start this over from scratch. Now with a new color, new and improved. So we were persuading or used to persuade. Remember, Greek imperfect can mean a lot of things or tried 
to persuade the enemy not to believe. And we're going to say either the or maybe even their general. Remember, Greek articles like to use like to be used even when we would use a possessive pronoun. We'd want to say, oh, it, it was the genitive of them, of the enemy, not their general. Um, but Greek is happy just using the. So we were persuading, well, we got these three options. Used to persuade, tried to persuade the enemy not to believe their general. Good, that sounds like a productive thing to do. If you can sow some discord among the enemy, probably helps you in your phalanx battle, but this isn't civilization, this is language, so we'll leave the cool stuff and get back to the cooler stuff. Grammar, of course. Yeah, right. Well, you're still with me, so that's a good sign that you're, you've are you already drunk the Kool-Aid. So let's keep going. Number nine, hoi poetai. Tain doxon parekusi tois athenaios. Ois. So the poets, and this is first declension, nominative. So this is going to be the subject of our sentence, most likely. The, well, absolutely right now, that's the only thing nominatives can do for us. So the poets, the glory, Tain Doxon, uh, nice first declension feminine, but that's now in the accusative. So that's probably going to be our direct object. And then parakusi, this is a new vocabulary. If you look down on page 32, it's provide, cause, produce. Note that this is a combination of the prefix para that we'll learn, plus echo. So this isn't a new verb so much as a, a combination of an adverb with a verb we already have. So it's provide, and this must be the present tense. There's nothing fancy going on. So the poets are providing, do provide, provide, glory, tois athenaeons. So dative masculine plural. This is probably going to be an indirect object, and especially with the verb of providing. This is kind of a gift relationship between the subject and the indirect object. The poets are bestowing this honor, this glory upon the glory, honor is time, glory upon the Athenians, great. So that's tois and then athenaeos, it gave it away. Athenians. Again, good second declension, masculine noun. There'd be good ways, and then that's in the data. There'd be good ways of making this feminine if, it, if we were talking about Athenian women, but we'll get to that later. For the moment, also we should know if it's mixed company in Greek, if it's men plus women, they would use a masculine expression. That's some of the kind of sexism inherent in the culture, actually in hearing into the, the language itself. Uh, but, but we're not here to judge, we're here to speak and learn. So let's, let's continue on now in a fancy magenta and say the poets, or maybe simply poets. This could be a class that we're talking about. Context would make it clear if we had already talked about poet Joe and poet Mike and poet James then we would know, okay, well, those poets. But we could just be talking about poets in generally. And they provide glory to the Athenians. And maybe this the is also op optional. Again, it depends on how specific our context was. Uh, we could just say glory to Athenians, but this seems to be potentially fairly direct we should also note that it's really Herodotus, as far as we can tell, who gives way unfair preference to the Athenians in his histories, but we don't need to get there. He's actually from Halicarnassus, so he must have had some nice donors in Athens and had to, had to make them happy. That sort of thing's been going on for a long time. Speaking of going on for a long time, it's time we bring this thing home. Number 10, final exercise. Atheles basileuen ton mason. Four words, can't be too bad, right? This is our new verb, right? This is the verb of wanting, wishing, desiring, that sort of thing. Also just being willing. So let's, let's try that last one. Be willing. 
I'm going to just go word by word here. Let's forget the whole context. So you, singular, that's our second person singular present ending. This could be our future ending too, but we have no sigma. This is the first principal part. It's number one. So you, singular, are willing. We could change this later if we need to. And because of that question mark, we will. But let's, let's keep on going. You are willing to rule. And remember that this verb pairs with the genitive, just like pistewo above paired with the dative. No real rhyme or reason. Often you can think of a way of expressing these things that helps make them make sense. And never when a verb takes a genitive or a dative is it something that's really physical and concrete. It always has to be a little bit removed, something like ruling or believing which is a little bit more imaginary, a little bit more concept rather than product and, and, and actual materiality. So you singular are willing to rule. And then here, what is this? Plural islands. So the islands in the genitive. Well, I allowed myself to cheat there a little bit. I didn't say what gender this was. Well, from the form, it's really hard to know. This could be nominative, masculine, feminine, or, or sorry, genitive of genitive plural in all cases of masculine, feminine, neuter or neuter. What's it going to be? How do we know? Well, we can't deduce it. We have to go back and just know that in our dictionary, it's hey nesos, nesu. This is all telling us second declension, but feminine. So that is feminine, but it doesn't really affect our translation. If you can get away with it, you can get away with it. And that's a nice thing sometimes. But now, finally, it's a question. So we could do that in English. You, 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 are, you are willing to rule the islands? Something like a question of disbelief. Greeks would definitely express that question of disbelief in, in this way. Uh, but if, if we're going to just have a more statement of fact, uh, we'd want to switch, invert that word order in English to mark it as a question. So are you willing, this is more like a survey question, to rule the islands? That's the takeaway. So let's see, there's some good colors here, but more importantly, what are we seeing? Well, we're seeing accusative plurals taking singular verbs. That's interesting. We're also seeing that expectations are really helpful in, in seeing that here we have a sandwich and we have to wait a little while for our expectation from this ta to be satisfied. But that cues us that this tu tamiu is going to be a genitive that is attributive and modifies those techna. It's the children, what children? The children of the steward. Here in example eight, everything was pretty straightforward. We had this verb that takes a dative and then we had just a straight article that we might have wanted to translate as a possessive there. Note also that we're using may with the infinitive to negate it. It's not ooh. This is may with infinitives, may with anything that's not indicative. If we wanted to negate the whole sentence, we would put an ook there, a kappa because it's preceding the epsilon. In number nine, we had the poets provide a new ver word Glory to the Athenians. This is a classic example of dative as indirect object, but we had a first declension masculine. We had a first declension feminine. Uh, we did pretty well. That was fairly straightforward, as was this last. We had the question mark at the end, marked by the um, semicolon in English, but it, for the Greeks, it was a question mark. Basileo is one of those verbs that takes a genitive, and atheles is a verb that well, here, Othello, here, Othelles in second person singular, present indicative, takes a complementary infinitive, like persuade up above. And then here we have, again, accent on the last syllable of the stem. The stem ends there. Basileoane, you were, or no, sorry, you are, or are you, rather, willing to rule the islands? Great, everybody just under 20 minutes. I hope that was helpful, uh, and we'll see you in chapter 7. Won't that be fun? Take care.